is Rachel Tessman from StampYourArtOut.com and today I'd like to share with you my outside the box ideas that I came up with using the contents of the March 2016 paper pumpkin kit that came in its not usual orangish reddish box but a blue Bermuda Bay color and the March 2016 kit is called pocket full of cheer what I do for um, my YouTube viewers is I make alternate project ideas every month with every single kit and then for my subscribers I send them some extra exclusive ideas so you'll want to get in on that these kits are great Everyone who's in on the fun receives theirs in their mailbox around the same time every month. So we all run to our mailboxes, rip open the blue tissue paper that comes with it to reveal our fun surprise new project that we're going to make. And the, and the contents not only include all the paper pieces, stickers, but it got, you have embellishments and you have all these adhesives, the special adhesives. You have a wonderful stamp set that you can add to your collection. That is worth the price of the kit alone. And then you have, of course, this miniature stamp pad that's super cute and great to travel with. Each kit also comes with a set of directions, photos for how to put the project together, and a link to a how-to video. Plus there's all sorts of resources out there. You can find Facebook groups, you can find people pinning ideas if you want to make something completely different than what the kit contents show you how to make. So why did we get a special Bermuda Bay box this month? Well, because two reasons. One, we're celebrating Paper Pumpkin's third birthday. Yes, Paper Pumpkin has been around for three years. And the other reason is because we just delivered the one millionth kit. So lots of people are getting in on the fun. And you'll want to get on, in on the fun because next month, they sent us a, a letter to let us know, but next month in April, we will receive an extra bonus stamp set. So if you are not a subscriber yet, or you went inactive, you decided to postpone your subscription for a while, well then start it back up because April's a great time. You're going to get that extra stamp set and the kits are just awesome. You're going to love it. To see my ideas that I've made with past paper pumpkin kits, you can check out all my YouTube videos that I have, or you can visit my blog at stampyourartout.com. Click on the paper pumpkin tab and that'll take you to a whole page worth of information. Um, you can get your questions answered there, you can find out how to subscribe, you can check out the prices, and you can even join my Paper Pumpkin Club. But I'm excited to start sharing what I've made. So let me first of all show you that, again, in this kit you get to make these fun projects here, and what they are are gift card holders. The larger ones look like this when they're closed up, and when you open them up, They have a fun card that you can place on the inside. You can write all that you want to say on there. And then the pocket of that envelope can hold the gift card. Pretty cute, huh? Now, these envelopes aren't necessarily meant to be mailed this way with a sticker on the outside, but you could put adhesive along here, close it up, omit that sticker here on the outside, or leave it there and see if it sends through the post office, and then just address on this side with your stamp and everything. And then the other gift card enclosure looks like this, and it comes with a little belly band that you can put on there. You open it up, and inside you have your card and your gift card, and you can make it say, Hooray Grad, and here, here's the stamps again. Hooray Grad, oh baby, just for you, happy, happy, and then there's all these fun little symbols here that you can put on the smaller parts. So, let's see what I made. Our first project for video two involves using paper bags. Yes, you are catching video two, so be sure to watch video one first so you can get some other ideas with this paper pumpkin kit. But um, let's just move on. So we've got paper bags. Now I have white ones, I have craft colored ones. I think that the brown paper bags just work better with this project. I think the white ones make it kind of washed out looking, so you don't want to use a white one. And I think the larger the bag or the wider the bag, the better. So we're going to use a larger size paper bag, a lunch sack, whatever you call these. And then I folded down the top. So to do that, you take and fold. You put a crease two different times. So you're going to crease it at the top. Use your bone folder. Give it a really sharp crease. And do it again and give it a sharp crease. So make sure it's nice and even. And then you open up your bag and you start. Now 
Now you're going to flatten out your bag again so it looks like this. And I had to actually fold mine back the opposite way on the bottom so that my seam, which you can see here, is on the back side. Long time ago, I made um, these fun little apron patterns for some invitations to a party that I was having. If you go to my blog, I do have a very rough um, outline that you can download. Again, I just traced around it, but it can give you a good template to use for the same project. Then I took that and laid it on top of one of the envelopes from the kit. I, of course, trimmed off the pieces around the edges because I wanted to keep them and use them for other projects. But I trimmed all the way around and I came up with a little floral apron. Make sure that your flowers are going the right direction. You don't want to have your flowers wilting. <laughs> then I took one of the cards and I cut it in half. I didn't use the full card like you can get when you're making your mini cards. I just cut the back side off and I stamped it. I used the basic black archival ink and then I also stamped using the ink in the kit a little flower next to it. Now I'm going to place that as a pocket on the front of the apron. Again, grab your adhesive, your sheet of adhesive, peel off the backing before using or applying the adhesive. So you just go like that. Rub it down and that way you can apply it without it stretching all over the place and getting all stringy. Again, peel off the backing, lay it down, press it, and peel. Then you need some along the bottom because you don't want your items in your pockets to be falling out. And there we go. Now we're going to place this on the front. And it might actually help to put the gift card with it as you are laying this down. So that in case you need to have a little bit of a bubble, if your gift card's super thick, then you're set because it'll wrap over the top. And now you have a gift card pocket just for you. Now we need to put strings on our apron. So you're going to flip it over. You're going to take these glue dots. You place one in each corner in the underarm area and then one at each top corner. I'm running out of glue dots. <laughs> then grab a few pieces of string or twine from the kit. I have pieces that are about five and a half to six inches in length. And I'm putting two, oops, one at the top that wraps around like that. There we go. And then I'm putting one on each side. And they're just going to hang loose. Like so. And then you'll want to put some adhesive on the back side of this so that it stays onto your bag. My recommendation is to use the edges of your dimensionals. And not because you've run out like me, but because they're longer and they go a further length. So I just trim like so. And then I've got these long pieces of strong adhesive that are great for holding on to my apron. And now you can place that on the front of your of your bag and you can fill it with gardening tools or with a bunch of seeds or something that the gardener in your life will love to get. And what's even better is the kits come with that blue tissue paper. It totally matches this. So fill up your bag with some of that tissue paper too. My next project that I have for you is a Project Life layout. If you don't know what Project Life scrapbooking or memory keeping is, it's basically pocket, um, it's, it's putting your pictures in pocket page, page protectors and then filling some of those pockets with decorative designs, titles, images. So we have a couple different sizes. In fact, the smaller size pages go in this small album that I decorated. And I keep my paper pumpkin stamps and informational directional booklets inside these types of albums. I love them. So let's go ahead and build a 12 by 12 page. And we're going to start with pieces. First, you're going to need um, a piece of 4x6 basic black cardstock and a piece of 3x4 basic black cardstock. Next, we're going to grab our paper trimmer and we're going to trim down 
one of the cards, the little cards that come in the kit, and you want to cut right on that score line. You could pick the floral design if you want to. I just picked the stripe because I don't have a lot of the floral ones left, and that's just going to get tacked down with some adhesive. The next piece we're going to decorate is this one here, and we're going to grab one of the square card pieces that come in the kit, and we're going to grab one of these pieces. They're the ones that layer over each other, but we're not going to layer them on top of each other. We're going to fill up that space, and we're going to stamp this with Hooray Grad and a little cap there, a graduation cap. So that's going to be a ne the next piece. And the last one, I've already started here. I cut down one of the envelopes with the floral envelopes and I stuck down one of these Bermuda Bay stickers and then I grabbed these little tags here because I had lots of them and I thought I would just put them along that banner so that these little holes are in different spots and I'm going to fill those holes. So give me a second. So I've mounted my st two stamps onto my block. I have one on one side, one on the other. And I'm inking up the Hooray Grad making sure that I have room for the hat to the right of it. And there's my title. And that'll go on here. I'm going to put that on with dimensionals. And I've already stuck this down with some of that snail adhesive. There we go. And this piece I've already stuck down. This is a very simple page, by the way. And these pieces I've already stamped and stuck down with that same adhesive. Now I'm going to grab these pearls that come in the kit. And then all you do is put your pieces into your little pocket page there. Got that up at the top. This one I would put a photo onto first and then put it in there. Then I've got my embellishment at the bottom. And then you'd fill up the rest of the pockets with photos from the graduation event. Now he's four in that picture, so that would have to be graduation from preschool or something. <laughs> but you got the idea. That's how you project life. It's pretty quick. We actually have really quick cards. Um, you don't even make them. You just stick them in there. There's an, uh, an accessory kit if you wanted to do some embellishing, but it's very, very fast memory keeping. They don't even call it scrapbooking. That's project life. Let me show you another project. If you're thinking, hey, I want to give paper pumpkin kits a try, well, you can see here that there's a couple different ways of getting these kits. You can do what's called prepaid subscriptions where you order them up front. You can get them in one, three, six, or 12 month packages. You order them all at once, you start your account, you put a code in, and they automatically come to you once a month for that number of months. Or you can do the automatic subscription month to month um, where it withdraws out of your credit card at the same time every month. It's $19.95 per month unless you're getting that high high um, package deal. The 12, 12 month one saves you $2 per kit, but $19.95 per month includes the shipping and the shipping costs are $5. So it's really like $14.95 a month. And as I said earlier, the stamp set is worth a lot. So you're getting a lot of product for that amount and it's a really great deal. Again, no, the um, April kit is going to arrive with a bonus stamp set. So you don't want to miss out. Plus I will be sending double the amount of exclusives to my subscribers that month. So how do you get started? Simply look in my video description here and you can see that I have a link directly to purchasing those kits. Okay, I love this next idea. I hope you like it too. It's a, a fold that's become very popular on, on greeting cards. It's called the pleated skirt fold. Can you see that? And I am going to show you how to make my version. Um, there's all kinds of different measurements that you can do out there, but I figured out one that works with the paper pumpkin kit. So let me share that with you. We're going to start out with one of the large envelopes, open it up, and we're going to cut a piece out of here that is three and a half inches by nine inches. If you look at the measurement here, it's going up to the nine inch mark, but if you look even closer, not sure if you can tell, you probably can't, <laughs> but it's going to eighth inch marks on my ruler. So it's going to make it a little difficult for us to just use simple measurement. We got to get into the math for this, okay? So let's start by placing that straight edge there against here so that we can trim off the bottom half. 
and this is the bottom because the flowers are facing a certain direction. So now that we've got that bottom half trimmed off, we're going to go right up to the three and a half inch mark and we'll trim this piece off. Now we need to put in our score lines. We already have one score line at two and three eighths inches. I'm going to zoom in a bit here. So as I move this piece along, I will try to move the ruler as well so you can see where I'm scoring. But I want every, um, every distance on the score line to be a pattern. So we're going to start with two and three eighths, which is already there. There's the score line for it. Now we're going to move this to two and seven eighths. So that's a half inch extra. We're only using the scoring blade. So get that cutting blade out of there. Make a score line. And now we're going to move to the three and five eighths mark. And if you look at that on the paper trimmer, you can see that that's more than a half an inch. That's actually three quarters of an inch. So we're going half an inch, three quarters of an inch every time. So there we had three and five eighths. Now we're moving it to four and an eighth. And we're scoring again. Four and seven eighths. Scoring again. Five and three eighths. Give it a score. The next one is going to be six and one eighth. That's almost off of our paper trimmer. We're going to give that a score. And then we've already got a score line that is in there. And if we extend the arm on our paper trimmer, we can see that that is at six and five eighths. There it is. Okay, we want to keep that one. It's already there, so we just keep moving. Now we're going to go to seven and three eighths. Can you see that? Seven and three eighths. And then the last one is going to be at seven and seven eighths. And we are done. <laughs> I hope I didn't hurt too many of you with those brain cells working so hard. <laughs> Some people don't like math. I, I do. I don't understand it. But So next what we're going to do is we're going to trim. So now we're going to move our scoring blade away. We're going to grab our cutting blade and we're going to trim from this first score line that we made. You can see there I bent it so you can see it. We're going to trim from there up to about halfway. It doesn't have to be exact. So if you look at this edge here, you're just going to eyeball the halfway point and you're going to set that on the cutting area of your paper trimmer and then set this right there on the cutting area. Give that a trim. Discard that piece. Save it for something else because I know you guys are thrifty and you'll figure out something to do with it. And now we're going to go ahead and score back and forth like a fan, like a fan fold. And you can see how alternating the folds from half inch to three quarters of an inch gave us that look like that. Okay. Now we have to tape it together. So we're going to place tape or adhesive, snail adhesive, between that piece and between that piece. And you're just going to go back and forth taping down, making sure that the tape does not get onto any areas that are going to be exposed. So always tucking in towards the fold. And there it is. And now comes the easy part of putting our card together. So I'm trimming my cardstock. I have some Bermuda Bay cardstock and I'm trimming that in half and then I'm scoring it so that we have the base of our card. And then we're going to also take one of these pieces from the kit. We're going to trim it right at that score line there. It's kind of a harsh score line so we want to get rid of that. We don't want that in our card. And then we'll move this along and we're going to go up to the four inch mark. And I'm actually going to go a little bit shy of that because I have already found out 
that my pleated skirt fold piece is not quite four inches all the way across like my first one was. So you might have those variations in your measurements depending on how accurate you, accurate, accurate you are when you score. So now it lines up really well. Okay, so the next thing we'll do is we'll add some, we'll add some banners. So we're going to take one of our sticky banners from the kit. And I've already put adhesive on the back side of my pleated skirt fold for the designer paper. And I'm going to add that right there. Now let's grab some white ribbon. And you could really use any white ribbon that you have. I know in past kits we've actually had white satin ribbon. This ribbon is called our um, Whisper White Satin Stitched Ribbon. And I have lost my ribbon scissors. I don't know where I placed it. <laughs> so, anyways, you're going to have to deal with, oh, I think I see it. You're gonna have to deal with um, rough cutting for that moment there in the video. There we go, we've got our little fun knot. It looks like a bow. Move that scissors. Grab our sharp one. Oh, how nice. Always set aside one ribbon for cutting, uh, or one scissors for cutting ribbon only. You will be so happy you did. And now we're gonna add our celebrate word. And the adhesive that I'm going to use to do that is, um, to add that, is the Tombow Mono Liquid Glue. It's a, a multi-purpose kind of glue. It's great for these types of things. I add um, designer paper to my Project Life mini albums that way. And um, I use it for all sorts of embellishments like this. But you want to make sure that you don't have it ooze out the side when you press it down because when it dries if any of it's sticking out it dries tacky it's a very sticky tacky there we go that looks pretty good we'll let that sit for a minute and as that's drying let's add some rhinestones to it and there's our finished card let me zoom in so you can see that a little bit better. And I also have the other finished card. This one I thought was a little um, more wild, and this one I thought was a little calmer, so I wanted to do a couple different versions so you could see different ideas there. There we go. The last project that I want to share is one that I just came up with. <laughs> um, I like creating little monsters. And when I was looking at this kit, when, it, when I first opened it up, I saw eyeballs. Do you see eyeballs? Aren't they cute? So um, I had to do something monsterish with it. Um, I took this piece here and thought, oh, I got a little mouth there. And so I looked through my scraps, and sure enough, I had pieces that I had trimmed off from previous projects. So I have my 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 guy here, I've got some black cardstock that we could put him onto because black cardstock always shows things off so well. So um, I thought we could put him like that and then I said, oh, I haven't used this side of the paper yet in my project. So I, I decided that would be more fun. So I'm going to open this up so it doesn't fly away here and grab a few other pieces. I had this piece which could become a hand and so I want to make a matching hand for the other side. And now we've got two little hands and those hands are going to hold on to a message that my monster is going to share. And most monsters don't speak English really well, I think. I don't know, I haven't met any monsters. Um, but my guy, he's just so loving and so cute that he just goes around saying, Happy, happy. So he's going to hold happy, happy. <laughs> All right, now we need to give him some teeth. So how do we make the teeth? We grab these banners here, and blue teeth, you know, not so good. We want him to look like he at least went to the dentist. So we're going to flip him over, and we're going to flip these guys over when we put them on. Actually, we're going to put them on this way so that they, they show the white on the other side. So let's go ahead and run our snail adhesive real close to the edge here and start tacking those teeth into the upper part of his mouth. See that? Super cute. Okay, let's do a couple more.
Okay, and then we need his eyeballs on. And I'm going to put those on with dimensionals. Of course. <laughs> of course I am. Because I can. Because I think it's going to be cuter. And they're going to go kind of wick wacky. Is that a term? Wick wacky. There we go. And then his hands, those have to be on dimensionals. So we're going to use the edges because those are skinnier. And then I'm going to put just a little adhesive on the edge of each of those hands because it's going to be touching and holding the happy, happy sign, which we will also put dimensionals on. Oh, that's so cute. And there's our, our monster card. <laughs> I'm going to move the eyeballs just a little higher there. There, now it's more centered. Happy, happy. And then for the inside of the card, because you don't want to write on black cardstock, or you could if you had like the white gel pen, but you could add just a half of one of the cards that come in the kit to the inside so that you can write on it. And there's our monster card. Yay! <laughs> I have more projects, but they are in a completely different video. There's no way I could fit all, all of these onto one. So be sure to watch video number one, the first one I recorded to see all of those. Thank you for watching. It builds creativity to think outside the box. Be sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel so that you can catch more paper pumpkin videos that I've shared using past kits and more that I'll share with future kits. Also, be sure to visit my blog at stampyourartout.com so that you can view close-up photos of the projects I shared and see photos of other paper pumpkin kit ideas. If you are watching my video on YouTube, then look for links in my video description below. I hope you all enjoyed this tutorial. Now I'd like you to all go and stamp your art out. Bye bye.